Um, there we go. Recording. Okay. So that right there, I'll never forget was like my biggest enlightenment. That was like my biggest epiphany in my business when I heard that part of that book. And that is how I started to sponsor a ton of people, you guys. And that's how I started to connect with my team a ton is because I started to tell stories because I used to lecture all the time before I, um, before I read this book. Like if you've been on my team for a long time, you know that about me. I used to lecture people all the time. Like, why are you doing this? You shouldn't be doing that. If you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Well, why would you do this? If you know you shouldn't be doing that you know like why aren't you just doing this why wouldn't you and I just like would lecture people and as soon as I heard in this book the first time as soon as I heard Big Al say like lectures make you think of like your parents you know I was like oh my gosh because it's true when you're trying to lecture people like how many of you guys lecture people on your team and you like didn't even realize it yeah, because like you want to help them and you just like you end up making them just feel bad and then they start eye rolling at you and then they lose respect mm -hmm. for you, you know, and it's just, an, it's, everyone does it. You know what I mean? It's just like what we think that we're supposed to do. It's what we think that, you know, because, um, exactly. It's make more use of stories with teammates. Absolutely. And that is like, okay. So the very first time that I utilized this part of the book was our very first team party. And it was when I announced that we were doing our very first team party to the team. And that was the very first time. And that was a huge transition for our team. You guys, um, I think it was when Sonia first joined and it was like when I, I literally, it was right then and there, and I'll never forget it. I was like, I'm going to use this. I'm going to hit on these pain points and I'm going to tell stories and, and I'm going to, and honestly, you guys, I'm not even going to lie to you right now. I, so many of the stories that I've told are like portions of them are sort of just made up so that I can connect with people. You know what I mean? And not like, I don't mean like a huge, like fake, huge lie. I mean, like I, I, I kind of overemphasize and like add things in. And that's to like hit people with their, in the pain points, you know, like to get people to connect, you know, and big Al says like, if you don't have a story to tell someone and you don't have that story to tell to like get somebody to relate to you, then tell someone else's. Well, to me, telling someone else's was like making up a bit of a story, you know, to get people to like understand and comprehend like, you know, well, somebody says, um, for example, like somebody says, you know, I'm too scared to go live or something like that. What kind of story can you tell that person? Like if you are, have never been scared to go live, you know what I mean? Like for me, it was just like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make up that someone else on my team you know, has gone through that. Like, even if I don't know that exact story, I'm going to tell a story to get that person to, well, this so-and-so on my team, you know, that's crazy. Like, I totally know how you feel because, you know, so-and-so on my team who is super, super successful, um, <laughs> get, get a moment with you is to look like a stone. You're so funny. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, having that, like, just, just being able to have that skill. I think that's a skill, honestly. Like, I feel like that's a leadership skill to just be able to tell a story like on demand like that and just be like, okay, this is, and just kind of like, just tell it as you go to be able to connect with that person and to get them to have that epiphany or that realization to know the biggest part of telling a story is to know that someone else out there, like another human being feels the same way and has conquered it, has gone through it and has, has conquered it. That's like the biggest thing. Uh, and that's the biggest reason for me why telling stories is so important. And that's why, honestly, I attribute telling stories and connecting to people, um, to where I am today. You know, I mean, a lot of you guys connected with me in some way, shape or form over some story about myself, you know, like a story about my life, you know, um, <clears throat> he tells stories and asks questions throughout. It's like the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, so anyways, what I, um, what I want to do on here is cause that was like my biggest takeaway from this book was like, you know, I mean, well, not my biggest takeaway, obviously like learning to learning to teach leaders, you guys to like the biggest thing that you can do to help someone become a leader is to teach them how to solve problems. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know? And I just feel like that was, that was huge too, because I mean, so many people let their problems just like overcome and like overtake them. And that's why, like, cause most humans are wired to quit. Like people quit. So many people set this goal on January 1st to like do all these things and they quit. Like we're humans and we're just kind of like programmed to quit. And, and so like, 
I think that the biggest thing, and most of you guys on here are like are very good problem solvers, you know, but the biggest thing is like teaching people and doing as our, doing ourselves, like putting it out there like that. We are problem solvers. Like how many of you guys like remember videos that I used to make where I would just put it out there like, and, and talk about things and like, just be really motivational on my wall, you know, like on my wall. And I would talk about, you know, problems and like, you know, tell stories on my wall. And that's why I told Ash, like go live and tell a story, you know, and she was like, I got to go live. I promised my people that I was going to go live. I was like, go live and tell a story. Like, like show people I'm a badass leader, you know, and you want to be in business with me or I'm a badass leader and you want my makeup from me. And like, I used to do that stuff all the time. It's just like, I would go out there and I would show up and I would go nuts and I would tell stories and, you know, I would motivate people. And that's what would get people to, to come in and be drawn to me is because I would not just do makeup videos, but I would exercise my, my leadership muscle. And I would teach people like, and tell them and show them that I'm a leader here. You want to be in business with me and you want me to teach you how to do this business because i I know what it takes and I'm good at this, you know? And it's because I would go out there and I would, I would make videos like that on my wall all the time. And I think that that stuff is really important because also unique presenters are going to share it, you know, into their teams and stuff like that. So you're going to get influenced there, like with other unique presenters and people are going to view you as a leader. You know, it's super important that you do stuff like that. So, um, I would love to know, and I would love to hear from you guys, like what, what kind of things because obviously like, tasking and sorting leaders is going to be a really big thing as you build your business, but you've obviously got to sponsor people. And I'm not going to sit here and lecture you guys about sponsoring because you know you have to sponsor, you know, and this is a really easy month to do it. Honestly, guys, like I've been really slacking on posting and not even posting anything. I've sponsored, I've sponsored four people. <laughs> I, I haven't posted anything. I haven't talked about it, you know, and that's like, I sh that's awful of me, but like, I haven't really talked about it much at all. And people, the people that are joining me are people that have been, they've, they're like, I got the email. I know that the kids changed. I've been thinking about joining you forever. And here I am. I'm ready. I joined. And it's because I've been so consistent for such a long time, you know, that, and I've, and people know that like, I'm, I'm great at this, you know, and, and they want to be in business with me. And so, um, I just, it just goes to show you like what consistency can really do. So as you guys are sponsoring and as you guys are doing these things that you know you need to do as a leader, what is it that you guys kind of really took away? Like, what are you going to do moving forward? I would love to hear from just anyone who, anyone who wants to talk about it. What are you guys going to do moving forward? That is going, what do you think is going to be different after like really reading this book? Like, what are you going to choose to implement into building leaders, into getting people started, into working your business? Because like he said something really big that he said, and I'll never forget this ever, ever, ever. He said, um, you know, we can't build a big business if we're constantly dragging people and we mm -hmm. can't build leaders if we're constantly dragging people or something like that. He said something along those lines, like we can't be dragging people and building leaders and we can't build a big business if we're, you know, if we're always dragging people or something like that. But like, that was, I mean, hello. I mean, geez, I, I feel like everyone is just always trying to drag people because we see this potential in people. We love people so much and we want them to be something that they're just not, you know? And so we spent all this time dragging these people. I spent eight months trying to drag a person. And that was eight months that I wasted that I could have been building other leaders who actually had potential and really wanted this. You know what I mean? So I wasted that eight months, but actually it wasn't wasted. It was like a very valuable lesson for me, you know? Um, and it's a story that I now have to tell. Okay. Which is relatable and it's, it's a great thing, you know? So Sonia, let's hear from you. I'm mute. Hi. Can you, you hear me? Can you hear me? Nope. Um, so my biggest, well, I think mine is more of a question. <laughs> so I totally, I understand the tasking and sorting and I am, I'm all like, Oh my God, this is a neat. Hold on. Why the hell am I even wearing? No one's around. Okay. So it's like, I feel good. I feel like it's like, okay, I have all these people that I'm just pouring so much of myself in. And now it's going to be a matter of like, Hey, read this book and get back to me on, on whatever. And then just see what happens. And then now I know who to pour into and who's different, right? Who's the person that I'm going to help to solve problems, not help solve problems, but help with their mindset shift. But I think my question is like, I don't know if I have, if I'm, I'm thinking about the leaders on my team right now who are probably on this video. Hi. <laughs> if like, let me just use one person as an example, because there's many of you on here. 
um, which I'm, that's awesome that you're here. Um, like Pam, for instance, like I know I'm pretty confident. Well, I'm, I shouldn't say this cause I don't know, Pam, maybe I'll test you tomorrow. But if I tell Pam, Hey, read this book and get back to me. Cause like, I want to know how you feel about this business. She's probably going to get back to me. But I also know that Pam is also not somebody that brings her problems to me because she's already got that thought process. She's already like, I feel like people don't come to me with their problems. That's a good <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they, they don't need to come to you with your, with their problems that you don't want them. Why to. can I still hear you? What? You can't. Okay. I'm saying that's a good thing that they don't come to you with their problems. You don't want them to. You're a problem solver though. You're a yellow personality and you want to help people. So you like crave people, like, please come to me with your problems. I want to help you, you know, because that's just how you are, but they don't need to come to you with their problem. They don't. Right. So can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Cause I couldn't hear you. Um, I don't want them to come to me with their problems, but in the book, it's talking about how to help them grow as a leader. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, and it's talking, it's like, helping them to figure out the, the, the problems. There but are how can I help? There are any leaders. Cheers to that. <laughs> All right. So you need to find new people to come to you with their problems. Okay. Like that's the thing there. Pam is already a leader, you know, Michelle, I'm sure, like, I'm sure that they have some things that they come to you with, you know, but like, yeah, you know, I, I'm everyone. I, I have things that I go to other people about, you know, but like I'm a leader and you know, the things that I come to people are not, de they're not like crucial to my business. You know, like the problems that I have are not like problems that are crucial to my business. You know what I mean? And so the thing that I'm picking up from this is like, you've already got great leaders. You've got great leaders. And so now your biggest thing is like, cause Cause this is about I mean, more yeah. So these girls like Pam and Michelle and you know, I think Brianne's on your team and um, who else do we have? Julie? Julie's on your team. Yeah. Julie's on your team, right? No. Who's team are you? Oh, you're on your, is, are you on Haley's team? Julie? I'm with uh, April and then yes, with Haley. Haley. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, because oh, um, we're Canadian, that's why. <laughs> all you guys look the same. <laughs> just I'm lumped kidding. us together. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, anyways, so the thing is, is, like, you, you're, from my perspective with your leaders, you, you guys have all been doing this for quite a while and you've got like some, like some strong, they're here. They're here. Yeah. You know, they're on these calls, they're reading this book with us, like, they're good you know, they're good. I think at this point they know what they need to do to grow and develop as a leader. And I think that what you need right now, not what you need, but what you're sort of looking for are new people that, ha that, that have, so that new people that you can help to, to problem solve, you know? And I get, yes. Okay. So let's, let's erase Pam for a second. Hi Pam. Okay. I love you. Um, let's say that somebody that's not on the zoom, I'd ask them about their business, how they feel about their business. And then they read the book and then I say, okay, like, let's, let's work together. It looks like to me that you're ready to be a leader, but then they're not coming to like, I feel like people don't come to me with problems. I don't know if I've set myself up to like, don't come to me with problems ask or them. if just ask the team, why are you, why aren't you coming to me with problems? If you no, feel no, like no. there's a particular person that you think has problems, be like, do you have problems that you need to talk to me about? It, and did I, and just be open. Ah, uh, there's the transition. Like, yeah. Just be open. Hey, I know that a big part of becoming a leader and developing as a leader is talking about your problems and learning how to problem solve. Do you feel like you're good at this and, and that's why you don't come to me with anything or do you just, oh. you just not have any and you don't come to me because you don't have any, or do you just feel like you've got the problem solving down, you know, and, and just, and just mm. I know that this is a big part of and developing as a, leader. I see a lot of potential in you. Always, always, always the compliment sandwich. A big part of growing and developing as a leader is X. 
And I see a lot of potential in you to become X, you know, to become such. And mm -hmm. I was just wondering, I wanted to come to you and ask you, like, um, you know, do you have anything that you want to talk about or are you good? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have anything else? No, I, I just needed, like, it's almost like that transition. Yeah. Like, how to transition to that. Yeah. I think that it's just a matter of, of getting those new people and, and getting excited when you get that person who's like eager and excited. You know what I mean? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it's going to be for you. Um, but I am, and, and which is, yes, that's plan A. But I also like to know the people that I've been putting a lot of time and effort into, mm -hmm. are they worth the time not worth everybody's worth it but like are they ready for that time and effort so i'm i'm doing this i'm doing this so that i can just cut that time yeah that's good because you gotta work hard you gotta work smarter not harder you know what i mean right and so i mean you like i think that you are at like you're at two very polar ends of your business right now. So you've got leaders that are like badass and they're super amazing and you know, you can utilize them and you can help them to, you know, flex their leadership muscle. And as can I, like we can both utilize, you know, your leaders like Brianne and Pam and Michelle and these girls, you know, we can utilize them, um, pretty much utilize everybody on this zoom, you know, to, to put them at the forefront of the team and to encourage them to go live on their wall and provide value to people in the form of training you know, to, to sh like encourage them to do things that will help them build up as a leader, you know, because at the end of the day, I really feel like most of you guys who are super successful in your business, like the reason why you became confident to become a leader and, you know, saw yourself as a leader is because you did those things, you know, and if you really think about it for a second, I think that you'll find that that's something that like for me, as I started to do trainings and other team pages, and as I started to do trainings on my wall and stuff, really helped me transition into holy crap I'm actually good at like I'm actually a leader like you know and then people started to view me as a leader and as people started to view me as a leader because the law of attraction you guys and like mindset is everything right like as soon as you really see yourself as a leader and as soon as other people you know that's when people other people see you as a leader that's when you really actually become a leader you know mm -hmm. leadership is a mentality it's a mentality but it's also like it's it's a uh it's in here leadership is like up here and in here you know it's not about like lecturing and bossing people around it's about how many people the more people that you help and the more that people understand that you're actually capable and really good at this and you show them that you know how to get the results like uh, it just really like, starts to fall into place i just had an aha uh, because a part a part of my question that i was like internally trying to figure out as we we're talking was so i have these badass leaders how can I help them to like go to the next level in their leadership yes. rather than, mm -hmm. and, and it's basically, cause I know that they do the things and if they're not doing the things, they come to me and you do the, that. Um, and then, but it, it's getting them to, it's the elbow nudges. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So cool. I'm good. And, help, and helping them build leaders. Right. Because right. when they see themselves building leaders, that's when they become confident as a leader as well. So that's a really big thing is like working together to help each other build leaders. Because as their downline begins to kind of flourish, they're like, oh my gosh, like, look what I'm doing here. This is crazy. And it just kind of like filters to the top, you know, and it's like, you know, but you, you be careful not to build a, a dragon. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like do it in a way that doesn't create an entitled monster. You know what I mean? Like you just, you, you know what to do. You know what I mean? Like be humble, be humble when you're building these people up. Don't like put them in the forefront of everything and only focus on the one person that you think is doing amazing to, to build. You know what I mean? To like, does that make sense? No, I, yeah. In my head, it's more of helping them to do, uh, videos on their personal walls of that, that's for value and not just makeup yeah everybody should be doing those honestly every single person on this on this call should be doing that because that's that was a big a big thing for my business and how i started to really be known as as a badass leader and I, 
you know, somebody, that's how I got, you know, noticed to speak at convention is I did that one video where it's like black and white and I'm wearing that wig, remember, and I'm getting all crazy in it and stuff. And like, I can't remember. It was like, as soon as I read the 10 X rule, something just lit up inside of me. And I was like, I, I just like got this crazy fire inside me. And that's when like the crazy, you know, pump anybody up. Amanda Lawrence was born it was after I read that book, like Grant Cardone unlocked something inside of me that I didn't know I had, you know, like it was crazy. And, 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 and that's who I am now because of that book, honestly, like it, and, and I went live on that, on my wall that day. And you could, do you guys know what video I'm talking about? No, I'll have to find it. But it's like that one where I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm all, and I, and the first thing I do is I fix my hat and I'm like, Oh hell no, we're about to do this thing. And like, I literally, I, I, I don't know, Haley shared it in the lash one time. Um, and it was just like, basically like, I don't remember, I'll have to find it. Um, but it was really freaking good. It was a really good one. Um, but that was it for me. That was like the start It's like something just got lit in my freaking butthole. And I just like, I don't know. I just went psycho, you know, and what, I, what, what I would like to find is the video that you did that got made you me join. click the join button. Yeah. Because there was a video, it was a video and it has nothing to do with makeup. It was just you talking. And that's when I was like, Hey, that's it. And I'm, that's what I messaged you. And yeah. it's not about the makeup videos. <laughs> the nah. makeup videos entertain people, but we have to remember to provide value. But sorry, let's go back so to let's, let's come up with something. As, as leaders, you know, as developing leaders, as growing leaders, as established leaders, let's come up with some sort of outline that we can do or create to help people on our teams grow and develop as leaders, you know, and step into leadership by posting certain things on their walls. Like every, you know, one day a week or something like that, we say, hey, I want you to go live and let's all go live and let's talk about this or something. Or we can task and sort people and we could say, hey, let's read the 10X rule. Let's all read the 10X rule because I know what that book did for me, you guys. Like, honestly, I know what that book did for me. And it literally lit something up in my soul. Like, I'm telling you, you guys know, like, it just changed something in me. I don't know what it was, but it just changed something in me. But it's like task and sort people. Hey, Ash. Um, task and sort people, you know, and be like, hey, who wants to, I'm, we want to help. I, we're committed. Maybe that's something we do. Now that we've read this book, maybe we all get together and we just say, hey, we're committed to building leaders on our teams. And if we don't have a lot of teams, like let's figure something out to start building people on our teams, you know? Like maybe we go live and we say, hey, like on our walls, we say, hey, we're starting a mentorship program with some new hungry and coachable people. And this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be reading this book together or whatever, you know, we do something and, and we just like, encourage people and then current people on our team and we encourage them like with some sort of something, you know, one day a week that they do and we guide them and we teach them, um, to, you know, to like how to provide value as opposed to only doing makeup videos on their wall or something. So I'm thinking out loud. I don't know, but uh, it could be cool, you know, but it, it's something that like, it will help you feel more of a leader, you know, because you're encouraging people and coming up with a list of something for somebody to do to, to grow and develop as a leader, but also as a professional network marketer. And um, it'll be good for the people that you're developing. Something like that. So, um, I, I think that we should, you think that we should, uh, like, I think that we should like all go live tomorrow night or tomorrow at some point and Maybe that could be hashtag the it. Tomorrow. That could no, be I mean, sorry, I meant us. Oh. <laughs> I meant like as leaders to put for us to all put into practice to not only do makeup videos and go and do a video regarding one of the stories in this book or one of yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Yeah. I can't. I don't know if anybody's shaking heads or like, if they're like no, what's... I think that's a great, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think like, okay. So like, because like for me, okay. For example, like the, the whole like Ferrari thing, like that really like, you know, he's all like this, mm. this is, like sitting on the street in a Ferrari and you're thinking like Fuck this kid, you know, he almost freaking killed me, you know, like that guy deserves to go to jail. And then you hear the other side of the story, like this kid in the Ferrari picked me up. I, I fell on my bike and I could, I almost bled to death, but like the kid in the Ferrari picked me up and sped me to the hospital. 
you know what I mean? And it's just all about like, and if, instead of like, this guy's being an asshole and driving crazy because he's got a Ferrari, instead you could change your thinking. It's all about just like changing your thinking about things. So you could go live and you could talk it's about like changing your thinking about network marketing and talk about, you know, like, like whatever, you know what I mean? And like something like that, you know, just, it's all about like what yeah. fires you up, you know, like what fires you up? Like, and obviously fired you up. So. Let's do that. Because that's like, you know, in a job interview, it's like, tell me one time when you had to X, Y, Z. Like, let's do that. Let's go live. Everybody go live tomorrow and talk about the Ferrari story and how it affected you and how that is an example of somebody else's story. But it made me think about this and like, it'll be something that can attract people to you. To be like, wow, she changed her mind about this. Maybe I can change my mind about it too. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Or like it could be fear based. Yeah. Like I love fears that. that you had. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. Um, okay. So Hashtag. that's a good starting point. That's a really great starting point for what we can do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, Brianne, let's hear from you. Where are you? Where's your snowsuit? There you are. All right. So I. I Oh, sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. I look like a Unabomber. So, <laughs> um, I totally apologize. Oh my God. So that's Where are you? There you are. I literally, this is the only place I can go to talk to you guys. So, uh -huh. um, I just kind of wanted to go back to the book. Um, it's the first time I read the book and you guys know, you know, I've been, I, I just started out, obviously I've kind of been with it like a few months now. And, um, I've been struggling really, really hard the last probably couple of days. And I just wanted to remind people that the book has so much value and it really meant a lot to me to try to understand who I'm looking for as a prospect to join my team you know, I, I've had a couple of people join that are like, you know, um, kidnappers and I know we hate that word, but, um, I fully love them and they've been very supportive to me, but I really want and truly am looking for the one person that Big Al talks in the book about that one leader. Like I want the me, the one person that feels the passion that I feel. And honestly, I've lost the passion the last couple of, of days. I've lost the passion for this business. And the only reason why I'm still here is because of you guys. And I want to regain that passion. And I want people to understand that what is in the book is actually true. And it's, it's a feeling that I feel like I know there's that one person that feels what I feel somewhere out there. And I know you guys feel it. Like I, I'm totally, the only reason why I'm still here is because of you guys. I'm having a really hard time just trying to stay with it just for the fact that like, I want that one person that sees what we all see in each other. And I don't know, like, it's just like a moment <laughs> for okay. me. If you got I got you. I got you. Listen. Um, what was it like, what, what was it when this business was fun and you had passion for it, Brianne, what was it about this business that gave you that passion and that fun? So it was the sisterhood mm -hmm. and, um, I kind of lost that. Why? I mean, it, it's hard to explain. <laughs> But things just got a little sketchy with, you know, the, the people that I surrounded myself with. And that's why I kind of got, thank God for Sonia to bring me into this group with, with you know, leaders that really truly live the mission, vision, and values that I see that I love about this company. And I feel like a lot of people have lost that. And that's, really sad for me. And when I read this book and I read about like what leaders are made of, I feel like why, why did, why does no one else see that? I don't know. I know it's weird. Who doesn't see that? I feel like my, um, not my direct upline, but I feel like upper lines don't, don't, 
don't see the mission, vision, and values anymore. I feel like they lost it. And I really want to make everybody regain that passion and that, you know, belief in, in what we stand for. Like unique is so freaking important. What we stand for is so amazing. And reading this book makes me so passionate about it. And it makes me frustrated that other people don't see it. Like it makes me crazy. Okay. So are you a leader? Are you, are you the leader that was described in this book? I feel like I am. Okay. So if you are the leader that was described in this book, then why do you allow your passion to be gone because of what other people are doing or not doing? Because do you remember the story in the book where he says, if you were surrounded by golden nuggets and nobody told you to pick them up, would you just walk away? You're absolutely right. (laughs) You're absolutely right. And I think I get more frustrated with myself because I know and feel exactly what you're saying but I still go back to like, why don't you do this? Why do you not do that? Like, it's crazy. So I think here, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like just listening to you, I feel like you don't believe that you could do this. And I feel like you don't believe that you can be successful or like, you don't believe that you know, you know how to do this or that you could become successful. So you hold yourself back and you allow other people to be the excuse for why you don't proceed with being successful. Do you think that that's accurate? I think that is completely accurate and you are not the first person to say that. Okay. So what can you do, Brianne? Like reading this book and like, you know, knowing, knowing, you know, what it takes to become successful. What can you do? Because it's not that your passion is gone. You've got passion for this business. Clearly you've got passion for this business. Clearly, you know, so what can you do to, what can you do to dive in and sort of like discover what it's going to take to keep you going. Like, what can you do? I think that that's a question that you have to ask yourself. And I really encourage you to dig into that and, 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 and rediscover like, you know, what it is about this, because those people clearly don't matter that you're, that you're talking about. Those people don't matter. They're going to do their own thing and they don't matter. You know what I mean? There are plenty of people on my team that there's nothing that I can do to control, you know, their decisions or change them or anything. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to focus on that. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to allow that to stop me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop or I'm not going to allow the actions of others to determine me feeding my family. You know what I mean? Because I got to feed my family, girl. I've got to take care of these kids. I've got to, I've got to be an example for all these people that depend on me, you know, and I'm not going to let the decisions of others get to me, bring me down, or, you know, the actions of others get to me or bring me down. I'm not going to do that. And you can't do that either. So, but, but I can sit here and tell you all day that you can't do that. But it's something that you have to decide that you are not going to do. And it's something that you have to decide that you are going to take and run with. So what do you, what's it going to take for you? You're here, you're reading the book. You've got to figure out what it is that's holding you back. And it's not those people. Those people are your excuse. So you no, amen. To what it is. Totally. And I, I think the book is so important for all of us. Like I think the book for me reading it for the first time, I know a lot of people are reading it for the second, third time. I think this book is so important and I'm so glad that we're reading this book and you're absolutely right. Like I need to take different steps but this book is really helping me. And I want you all to know that are on this call, like you all are helping me to, to progress myself to the next step. And I definitely have to do, I mean, personal development mindset, that is my biggest problem and my biggest asset. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's really so important. Yeah. And um, oh. I love that we're doing this together. Good. And we're going to keep doing it together, but we're not just doing this to be hurrah, hurrah, and to be friends and, you know, to be on here together. We're doing this to, to be better. We're doing this to take action in our business towards, you know, to getting to that next level, to building leaders, you know, to, cause that's why we, we all started this was to build leaders. You know what I mean? And to like, and to get into this and to make amazing things happen and to progress in our business, you know? So 
you, I really encourage you to dig deep within yourself. Like, I don't know if you were on the zoom last night, but like dig deep within yourself and, and figure out like write down why, why is this important to you? And what are you going to do to keep going? And it's great. I'm so proud of you for reading this book because that's the first step. Like you're taking steps and that's something to be so proud of. So step one is you read this book, you're discovering these things about yourself. Now you've just got to get to step two one foot in front of the other, keep moving forward and get to that next step, get to that next step and then focus on getting to the next step. But it's not about like one extreme to the next. Okay. Um, for me, I have been where you've been. Okay. I've been where you've been. And I, um, I'm actually going to walk away for just a second so I can get Kennedy to bed. Cause she's just like creepishly staring at me, um, to take her to bed in a second. But, um, I just want to say this one last thing. Um, I have been where you've been, where I literally allowed like other people and like my sort of like, I guess, hate for them because they were my upline and and big Al talks about it in here. Like they were benefiting off of me, you know, my hard work. And I was just so angry at them. And, you know, like, I can't believe that these a-holes, like they don't even talk to me. They never shout me out. They never cheer me on and they do all these things and blah, 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 blah. And like, and, and I was like so angry at them and I would just talk about it all the time. And I wanted everyone to hate them. I wanted everyone on my team to only like me and I wanted them to freaking hate my upline. Okay. There are people on this team going through that currently. That person is where I was. Okay. And so, um, I've been there and I'm not saying that you want me, you want, you know, you want us to like hate them or think nasty about them or anything like that, you know? But what I'm saying is I've been in a similar situation and it was, it was a part of my journey. And it was a part of my growth process. And it's a part of my story. If I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't have this story to tell you. Okay? So recognize that this is a part of your journey. This is a part of your story. Grow from it. And grow your team so that you can use this story. Okay? To tell other people. Because you deserve to be that person just like I'm that person for you right now. You deserve to be that person for someone else and you will be so long as you keep putting one foot in front of the other foot sister. Okay. You're going to do big things, girl. I know you are. I can feel it. Love you. All right, you guys, I'm going to go talk Kennedy. And so somebody want to like take the floor and keep going for a second and I'll be back. Anybody? Michelle, did you want to talk? Yeah, I'll talk. Hi guys. Um, so I just wanted to touch on a couple of things. First of all, Sonia, I want to tell you that you say nobody goes to you with their problems. Girl, come on, right? What, I mean, I have come to you with my issues and I have learned to handle the problems like it says in the book as a leader. You've taught me that you are you trying to talk (laughs) yes that was my own thing where I'm like why are people coming to me but it's because the people that are here like because you got you got it because you you come to me when you need me and I get that but I think it's how to handle the problems I appreciate you for saying that yeah (laughs) yeah um and um I just wanted to tell you guys what I did today so I had two prospects right now and I implemented what was said in the book about giving tasks giving them a task a simple task to see if they complete it so I actually invited both of them for lunch just have lunch my treat have lunch we'll talk um one girl joined me but stood me up for lunch and the other girl met me for lunch and after she met me for lunch, we were talking, you know, and figured out where she wanted to be, what was going on. And she, I, I told her, I said, okay, so like what you need to figure out is like, why, why, why do you want this? What does it mean for you and your family? I asked her some, all the questions and she came back and she sent me it and she completed that task. Um, and right now I have literally no team, not one. Not one single person on my team is working this as a business or anything. Um, Well, I lie, actually. I have one from my downline, my down downline, who she is actually doing something. Um, But other than that, I have no one on my team doing anything. So I am going to 
work and build with this <laughs> with her and pour myself into her while I am rebuilding my team. Um, but my point is, is that for you, Brianne, if I had allowed my whole team stopping to affect me, um, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't still be going. And that mainly is from reaching out to Sonia, to Pam. You know, I have Sonia. I go to Sonia and she gives me love and affection. And I go to Pam and Pam is like, shut up, Michelle, just get over it. And for me, like, I realized I need that. I need both of those. I need someone who's going to be like, shut up, Michelle, stop whining. You know what you're doing. Just go do it. And then I need someone to also, you know, cuddle me like Sonia does and tell me how to be a, a passionate, loving leader. And, and ask you questions. <laughs> huh? And ask you questions. Right. Why do you think this? Why do you think that? <laughs> right. right, right. You know, so um, I just wanted to tell that story about giving the task and implementing the tasks. And also, Brianne, like, you said you've only been doing this a few months, right? Just a few months. Um, you're not there yet. What you're going through right now is building you to be who you need to be in the next phase. So you have to expect these things to happen. Like when I was three months into my business, I got into the worst fight with one of my team members. Like she, completely engulfed me and she chewed me up and spit me out and drooled all over the place while doing it okay and it affected me so much and it broke my heart so much because I had poured so much love into her and so much of my time and that is something that I had struggled with is the fact that I pour all this love into people and then they leave and one of the biggest things that I've learned from this book and from going looking for that leadership from Sonia is that that's got nothing to do with me and I have to stop real I have to stop letting it affect me so much. And um oh god, I'm having such a brain fart. Sonia, what was that word? I use it all the time and I'm having such a brain fart. What was that word you told me to use? Appreciate. What about what? Oh, like when I'm starting to think of that something's about me and it's really not. Drop the mirror. No, no, it was just a, it was like a like an acronym, like it stood for something. <sighs> Poop. Oh, it's not about you. Um, Jesus. Yeah. See, me too. Oh, um, just Q-tip. Quit taking it personally. Yes, that's it. Yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, and I actually use that so much now. Quit taking it personally. You can't control how other people react and how other people are. You can only control how you react and how you are and the action that you take. And it says a whole lot more about other people than it does about you. And for me, you know, I have the same thing going on with, you know, people and I you know heard such a hard truth it's like if you continue to focus on it and you continue to talk about it then that makes you look like you are the one who's trying to bring people down and who's trying to start drama and yo I don't want that so I think the best thing is to just go on with your business and just continue to build your business and continue to grow yourself and not focus so much on what just happened what just happened just leveled you up to the next level where you need to be in order to be the leader that you're growing into does that make mm -hmm. sense so that's all i have that's what i had to say thank you and i'd like to <laughs> so. just add to this as well because um i feel like uh what brianne's uh, feelings towards like sisterhood and community and people not feeling that like uplift and power validate and all that like I 100% get that because sisterhood to me it's the reason why I stayed it's the reason why I stay 
like I build a business for my family, but I could just be like, peace out. I don't need any of this. Like, I'm, I'm just going to go, re I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to have outside sources. Sisterhood to me is like huge. And when I'm not feeling the good vibes, it brings me down. And so in the beginning, when those, when the non good vibes were happening, because we can't control what other people do do think see feel whatever we can't control others we can only control the way we react i had to start to realize and this was like a long time ago that if if that is what's so important to me then that's what i need to build and it's and the fact that we're saying like this is a part of our story like this is a part of your story or any struggle that you're going through is now a part of your story there's a reason why it's happening is because it's it's trying to shine a light on something that's important to you and so if sisterhood and community and passion and uplift and power validate is something that's really strong to your heart, then that's what you're going to create. You're going to create that. Mm -hmm. And like yes. my team knows that if it doesn't have that feeling, then if it doesn't come from love, it ain't mine. And that's it. Like I pick and choose who I'm going to surround myself with. And yes, we need, we are a, amongst others, but the people that are the closest make those the people that bring you joy. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to add to that. Oh, can I add something? Because Brian and I have been talking, Brian's I've been, we've been talking and I legitimately said to her, if the sisterhood is what keeps you here and what ignites your passion and you don't feel, and I agree, if you don't feel that, then we need to be that ripple and that change in creating that sisterhood you know we hear it all the time if somebody's not doing something then you do it so if you feel as though there isn't that sisterhood then we need to become that sisterhood and create that culture mm -hmm. absolutely and, and also like honestly and brutally honestly like when you get a bunch of women together some shit's gonna happen <laughs> you, but where it comes in is where you can, when you bond is when you can come in and you can talk about it and get over it. And that's who you know who your yes eggs in this business are going to be for life is if you can have something happen and then pick up, dust off and keep moving, keep loving on, mm -hmm. you know? And unfortunately, not everybody's meant to be in your tribe. So just move on and look for the other people that are meant to be in your tribe. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ash, I see you raising your hand, but Sarah Shaw has had her hand raised for like ever over here. So I'm going to call on her because she's over here freaking rocking out. Um, what do you got to add, Sarah? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just so I don't forget, because I'm a total squirrel, apples and oranges are my first topic. Run with anybody is my second and move the F on is number three. Cool. All right. I'm going to put on my boss, babe. This is what I do for a living. Um, because when people can't um, figure things out, that's what I get called to do is help you figure it out and sometimes just tell you. <laughs> and so I'm feeling so excited, Brianne, that you brought this all up because um, you and I are kind of in the same boat. And what I mean is we're, we're really early in our journeys. I mean, I've only been doing this since September. I'm not sure about you, but I got to remember all the time, me and Amanda, we're apples and oranges right now. She's five years down the road and I'm three months down the road. And sometimes I, I look at Amanda and I go, damn, I want that. <laughs> and, and I think, how the hell can she do that? She's so amazing. But that's the fire and that's the excitement. And I will tell you right now, I am in a total, I'm, in a, I'm not in a total struggle, but I get what you're saying because, you know, I was on like this hot fire and then it seems like the last four weeks all through December, I've been trying to figure out what the hell am I doing? And what I've figured out is because I'm the, you know, not the apple with her, I'm the orange, I've got to figure out my path. And everybody's different. Every little clever way of doing something doesn't work for everybody. And just because somebody you know is doing glam bags doesn't mean it works for you. You know, maybe you're doing something different. And I've had to kind of learn that because my comfort zone is different. So um, I've learned apples and oranges and I too am in the rebuilding stage too, because I don't really have anybody working on my team, but my next point is run with anybody. And right now I, I have surrounded myself with other 
teammates of Amanda's because I don't really have any of my own. And so I am, <laughs> I am running with a few people of Amanda's team. She probably doesn't realize it, but we're doing all this stuff in the background. I can't tell you how long it's been that I've asked Amanda a question because we're figuring it out. But on that same breath, there's a couple of them that I'm feeling are bringing the group down. And so now it's time to outgrow it and move the F on. Not because I'm mad, but just because I'm ready to move on. So I'm not, I, I hope you don't feel dogged. I hope you feel loved by all of us um, because I, I felt so much passion when you were talking. So um, I'm just excited to say something about that, but I just wanted you to know you weren't alone. Oh, I love that. That is so awesome. Like, okay. First of all, I want the first thing is like, who is it? Who, who, who's bringing it down? Who's bringing it down? But you know, what? Like, it doesn't matter. Cause you got this. You got like you girls. And I got I it. Know who you guys are, but like, I just feel like you guys got this. I have an idea of who's, like, who's kind of like falling back or whatever. And that's fine. Yeah. Because the thing is like, okay. people are going to fall back. You know what I mean? People yeah. are going to fall back. They're going to fall off. Like we are human. People quit. Maybe they'll come back. Who knows? Who cares? You know okay. what I mean? Like, let right. people where they are like that's what we've that's what we've mm -hmm. that's what we figured out you know what i mean so um i love all of this and something before ash before i call on you something i want to say really quickly and and then before we wrap up i want to ask you guys a question because i always like to end with a question to get your wheels turning okay um slippers are in the ring i can feel it in the little arch um okay so Something that Haley said was, um, we can't control the actions of other people and we will all drive ourselves crazy trying to control. You can only just release it. No, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Okay, here we go. hundred percent. My takeaway. I used to do it on a small scale and try to drag people to green. I never thought I'd get people to green and then have to drag them some more. I recognized that I was doing that and stopped, but then felt defeated about starting from the bottom again. My resolution is to consistently build people and stop relying on one or two rock stars on my team because I can't wait. I can't want this for them. I need to get people to leadership and then let them problem solve and fresh and start fresh faster than I have been. So here is what I want to say about that really quick, Haley. Um, so a few things kind of like popped out at that, uh, popped out at me about that is the first thing was starting from the bottom again. And you like that to me is like the worst way that you can look at this because none of us are at the bottom of anything. We are building a business here. Okay. And like, if we are always looking at it as like, you know, we had a bad month, so we're starting from the bottom. We've got a sponsor with people. So we're starting from the bottom. No, you guys, we're not starting from the bottom ever. We are supposed to be doing these things every single day, all day. Like we are never good. We're never comfortable. We're never, we're never gravy. We're never golden. Like even me where I am, like I'm not good. And I've got to keep doing these things to build my business. Like if I looked at it as starting from the bottom, I would feel so defeated all the freaking time. And I would never, ever, ever in a million years want to get up. Holy shnikes. I would feel so defeated and dead all the time. And I would never want to do anything. So instead, like, I really encourage you to look at this as like, you are, hold on. Where's that sound coming from? Starting me. I don't know where it's coming from. Um, but anyways, we're not starting from the bottom. We're building a business. I'm going to continue to build my business. We're not starting from the bottom, you guys, okay? Ever. None of us are ever. We're just building our business here as we are supposed to, okay? Um, the next thing is, um, what did you say? Pulling people to green, you know, and then continuing to have to pull them again, okay? If you have to pull someone to green, you're going to have to keep pulling them inevitably. So it's best that you just like recognize that and it's okay to like help, have to like pull somebody to get there because you need them to get there. That's fine. But you immediately have to recognize that that's where they're at and that's where they're going to stay. Okay. Um, and I still see, like, I still see you holding on to hope with some people. The sooner you let go of that hope, the sooner it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, easy for you to move on. Okay. Um, so just like, just and, and don't make it a resolution, make it a way of your life. Like this is your life and this is how you're going to live it. You know, you are so good at this, Haley. <laughs> like you are so good at this. Okay. You've always been good at this. You are, you've always been somebody that I like just constantly want to just boast and brag and go crazy over because you are 
so good at this. And I think that along the way, you've hit some roadblocks and you've hit some, you know, you've hit some turbulence and you've, you've gone through some things, you know, you, you quit your job and you had to get your job or you, you, I don't know what happened. I can't remember, like you lost your job or something, but it gave you all this time freedom and you were like on fire and building your business and doing all these things. And then you had to go back to work and you just, I feel like you just got into your head and you've just got to get out of there. You've just got to get out of there and you've just got to go back to like, who you used to be like when you were building something amazing because you are still that person your circumstances have just changed okay so just remember that you are still that person you are so good at this business you are always going to be good at this business you know exactly what to do you've just got to stop thinking these negative things you've just got to stop thinking these things about yourself okay um okay so um do you want to add anything to that Haley She's like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I like just don't want to cry. So I'm just not going to like. Sometimes you need to, boo. Sometimes that's how I, it starts. Like legitimately when you just said like you are, you are still the same person. It's just that your circumstances have changed. Yes, I, like, you really are. Yes, you that. are. I really needed to hear that. That's it. Like that was just perfect. Everything you said was perfect. Like mindset shift. And I'm like really glad that I made it to the Zoom and didn't fall asleep at 6 p.m. So thank you. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing, Haley, that you have to remember is like we all are human and we all have our stuff. We all have our this is a journey for everyone. Like you, you have like we all, every single one of us, you guys, and this is not a lecture, this is me just saying it, okay? Like we're gonna go through stuff you guys and it's gonna suck and we're gonna want to give up and it's gonna suck like we're gonna feel defeated and it's gonna freaking suck but it's like just remember that we're gonna go through that and those things are going to happen and there's literally nothing you can do to stop them but what you've got to remember is this is a part of my journey like this is my journey like go get a tattooed on your arm or something and just remember this is my journey and everything that you're going through and everything that you're experiencing is a part of your journey and it's happening because it's a it's supposed to happen that way. Your circumstances changed what they are now because you're strong enough to handle that. You just don't believe it yet. You just have to keep pressing forward on your journey because this is your journey and you're supposed to go through these things and you're supposed to experience these things because you are bound and determined and inevitably going to build in an extremely ridiculous business here where people are going to need to hear these things from you. They're going to need to hear about these bumps and these things in your journey that you're going through that are going to help change their lives because you went through all these things to become the warrior women okay the warrior woman that you are today okay so you just have to remember that girl write it down on your mirror in your bathroom this is my journey my journey okay all right ash give it to me girl <laughs> i just wanted to say that to like we have each other. Like that is the what we talked about sisterhood just a second ago. And then we're talking about these things that we're going through and having a bad year. And I lost a really close friend to me this year and like all these things. And I know, and I get that it's embarrassing to talk about the stuff that you're going through. I get that it's embarrassing to be in the, the cusp of it. Right. But why don't we reach out to each other? Like, why don't we message each other and be like, look, I feel like a piece of crap today. Look, I don't feel like I'm enough today. I don't feel like I'm worthy today. I, I feel like I'm missing my sisters today. Like, I, I get that it's embarrassing, but you guys, from a woman that has been in an abusive relationship, the worst thing that you can do is be silent. Like, we need to talk to each other, reach out to each other. And if you don't have anybody to reach out to, you can reach out to me and like, we're in Vegas, baby. Okay. It won't get repeated or any, like, seriously, we just need to reach out to each other. And I wanted to talk earlier when Michelle was talking about um, a few things that triggered me that, uh, you know, losing that friend of mine this year was a huge, huge gap in my heart. It was very hard for me to go through. But the thing that I didn't realize until now looking back at it is that people come in and out of your room your entire life you know and we can be the person blocking people to come into our room or to leave our room too and if i would have just left 
if I would have just let her go when she wanted to go, I would have been able to invite more people into my room, you know, and things that it's just like when when I was reading the part in the book on the way home today, when he was talking about problems are going to happen and leaders don't talk enough about the problems that are going to happen, like signing someone up, it was so bold of him to be like, I'm going to sign somebody up and tell them, expect that we're going to have a problem next week. <laughs> I was like, I would never be able to do that. But then I was like, why don't I talk about that stuff more? Why do I have this facade that I have to be perfect and I have to show these people the perfect Dash Nikki? Why am I not talking about it? And I went live tonight and I talked about the breakthrough I had and how emotional I was today. And I was just crying so hard earlier this morning and it's like people relate so much more to the bullshit that we're going through in our life than they relate to the positivity like if it's a sisterhood that you miss talk about the sisterhood you miss yes we're a part of unique to uplift empower and validate and that part should be perfect but it's not like there, there's just no perfection in it there's progression in it and that's what we need to focus on but i just wanted to leave you guys with sometimes you know people are trying to come into your room but you're the person blocking them mm -hmm. you're standing in the doorway 100 yeah. percent. um darcy you had your hand up okay yes yeah, so i just want to talk really one quick one about my takeaway from the book was about changing the mindset from a distributor to a leader Okay, so that's really huge. So I have these people and their mindset is a distributor. So it's like through telling the stories, we can help them to make that shift from a distributor mindset to a leader mindset. So he was, you know, sharing the stories about, you know, the products on back order or the person wouldn't answer the phone. Well, you know, what are we going to do? Get in the car and drive there and, and cut the, the phone cords and, and then make them talk to you. So it's about you know, not doing everything for them, helping them by telling stories to change their mindset. And I wrote down to spend too much time solving others' problems and it's physically exhausting. So um, I'm not a spring chicken and I think I spend a lot of time do, solving all their problems, doing all this stuff, making sure everybody's happy that, you know, I provide them the best value and it's really physically exhausting to me. And it's draining and doesn't leave a lot for me and, and that whole energy that I need. Um, and then when Sonia was talking about tasking and sorting to find leaders, you know, and then who can I pour into? Um, and last night, you know, because we had, you had talked in the Monday Mastery about, um, you know, sharing your why. This wasn't my why, but I gave value in talking about retirement because I am 56, I said, I went to social security and saw what I was gonna make at retirement. You cannot live off that. You work 40, 50 years and you go to retire and you have nothing. So, um, and I talked a little bit raw about being in financial, you know, I look at, I don't own my house, I have bills, I have this. So I really said, you know, maybe this is going, this is a option for a legacy to change that direction to change that trajectory. It's not too late for you. And you know, some, some women messaged me. So the story can be different. It doesn't have to be about, you know, I mean, at, no matter where you're at in your life, that's what I just wanted to say was, it can be from having babies like you, the twins, to realizing you're impending, you ain't got shit, right? you know? You're gonna have to work till you're freaking 70. And I'm not gonna work till I'm 70. I have been working 42 years, paying into social security, and I am gonna get shit nothing not enough to even pay a mortgage right. so anyways those are some of my takeaways but really the whole mindset is really what i wanted to um chat about was every uh, every time we see a problem we have to say their mindset's a distributor how can i move them to the leadership mindset right i'm not going to talk but a lot of people hit some points for me about you know building leaders dragging them once i was able to leave that person that i was trying to drag to green i feel so much lighter they've come back I don't ever, I mean, if they ask me a question, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna answer, but I'm not like, are you gonna go live? Are you gonna sell any makeup? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna do it? What are you doing? Well, how come you're not going live? Nothing. I just am like, this is where she's at, and I have room for other people in my heart now. I shouldn't say in my heart, but in my in my body. Yeah. Um, all right, that's, that's all I had. That's perfect though, because you know, what I wrote down, uh, you kind of, you got my wheels turning. So here's the thing, a lot of us, you guys, it's so common and it's so normal. And this is what we're gonna leave with, okay? Um, I like, I could sit on here for hours with you guys, but 
Um, a, a lot of us, you guys, like we've spent so much time, like give me like a thumbs up. Like we've spent so much time seeing people that we thought had all this potential and we're dragging and dragging and dragging. And it literally just eats us alive. Like it eats us alive. And that literally ruins it for us. Oh. It ruins our experience. It ruins our business. It ruins our drive. It ruins our passion. It takes all of our joy out of this business because we are so obsessed with getting to the next level that we literally forget that we're in business to build people. Like we're in business to serve people. We're not in business mm -hmm. to push people across the line that don't want to get there, you know? And I think that that is the number one thing that we have to let go of this year. You guys is like, we've got to stop pushing people, you know, and, and, and thinking that we've got to hold on to this one person who, who, who mm -hmm. has the potential. They've got the team, their blue status. They, you know, they get so close every time that's fine. But if you don't feel a hunger from them and if you don't see potential within their downline, you've got to let it go. Because if you want to build, like he says, if you want to build a big business and if you want to build leaders, you don't have time to drag people. You're wasting too much time dragging people and we don't have time for that. You're going to like, how long, think about this, write this down, <laughs> like really think about this. How long have you really spent trying to get that person or those people across the finish line to the next level that don't want to get there? How much time have you wasted? We're not going to, we're not going to really call it wasting time because it's a lesson. It was a long lesson, but how much time? think about that. Okay. And I want you guys to look, to become self-aware next time. Like as soon as you know, and as soon as you recognize this person doesn't really want it, figure out what you're going to do to be like, I got to let it go. I got to let it go. Maybe go to Sonia and be like, Hey, what is something that I could leave this person with to get them to sort of maybe possibly unlock something deeper to keep them going or to get them to want to do this a little bit because she's really good at digging deep and, and helping people to discover that. So maybe be like, Sonia, what's a good question I could ask or something or ask me, what's a good question I could ask, you know, and leave them with a question before you let them go, leave them with a question. Just be like, fuck you. I'm leaving. Bye. Like you don't want this. <laughs> I'm over it. I'm gone. You know, you don't want this clearly. I'm over you. And like, we just get so angry at them that we just like, let them have it. You know what I mean? Like, don't do that. Leave them with a really like a great question that's going to get them thinking. If they come back, like you put the ball in their court and if they come back, amazing. If they don't, that's okay. Be okay with them not coming back. Be okay with the ball staying in their court. There's so many other tennis balls that you can freaking bounce back and forth, you guys. So many. Okay. You just have to be willing to go out there and work to find them. Okay. So Darcy, you've got to give yourself permission to stop doing those things for everyone. I'm not saying that you do anymore, but I'm just saying like, give yourself that permission. You're doing an awesome job at that. And then get over it. We've all got to get over the fear of, of losing people because we're not doing everything for them. Mm. Okay. Because we always get so scared that like, if we don't, if they like, don't know one thing they're going to go and like, no, you guys, they're going to go anyways. They're going to go anyways. Okay. Um, so here's what I want you guys, um, to do. Here's like my, what I would love to see in the chat, you guys. And then we can kind of, I don't want to discuss this on here, but what I would like to discuss on here in the chat is what we're going to do next. Um, I would love to do what Sonia said. And I would love to, um, even though this book is over, like I would love to keep reading with you guys and keep doing these Zooms. I would love to do that because I feel like we're making really great progress here and we're learning a lot. Um, and we're also getting closer as a unit, as like a leadership unit, which is really important to build that front strong, you know? Um, and so um, I would like to figure out in the chat what book we're going to do next. Um, I would like to do what Sonia said. All of us do that tomorrow. Um, at some point, it doesn't matter what time, when you do it, it doesn't matter. Just go on your wall and go live and, and teach, teach people something. Show them that you are a badass leader and you have knowledge of this business and that you are a motivator and that they want to go into business with you and then end it with like, you know, something about like, um, you know, why is the best time and, and, and why they need to join your team now you know, and then a call to action, drop this if you're ready or something. Okay. Um, let's do that. And then here's my suggestion. Um, I'm going to give you guys three things to do, um, in the chat, but my suggestion, you guys, as, uh, I think it was, who, who said it? I think it was Ash. Maybe you were talking about, um, he says like, let people know this is going to happen and to, we're going to have a problem next week. Like it's going to happen. My very first video in the training website has mm -hmm. all of that. Like it literally goes over all of that stuff. However, 
most people will not even make it to that first video. So my solution, as I was thinking about that, I was like, I have a video that says all that stuff. Like I have a video that says, you know, it's very powerful. And I don't, if you guys want to like go back and watch it in the training uh, website, it's there. It's the very first video. I have like a, a, a man bun, you know, and a shaved head and a red flannel on It's that video. Um, and it's really powerful, but how do we get people there? How do we get people there? My solution is get on the phone with them the day that they join and tell mm. them, tell them this is what's going to happen. Here's how you're going to feel. Okay. Connect it's almost like reiterating what you say in the voice message. Exactly. Yeah. So get on the phone and then it's, so maybe change up your voice messages and be like, Hey, I would love to get on the phone with you. Do you have any time today? You know, it's going to suck, but y'all, we don't sponsor a hundred people a week. You know what I mean? You've got time Hop to on a call. Keywords is hop. Sorry. A key word is hop on a call hop. with you because it brings the, the anxiety down. Sorry. Yeah. We're only going to be on for a couple minutes. I just want to say a couple things, get to, you know, just kind of formally introduce ourselves. Like just let's, do you have any time to hop on a, like a couple minute phone call today? That's it. Um, they're going to be nervous because people get nervous to talk on the phone. It's so stupid, but it is what it is, you know, or even like, Hey, do you have time to like hop on a FaceTime with me? I'm going to look at yeah. that. Doesn't Video matter. chat. Right. Anything, whatever. Get on the phone with them for a couple minutes and just be like, Hey, I know I said this in my voice messages, but I just really wanted to, you know, reiterate. I wanted you to hear my voice like over the phone to know that this is the real deal here, girl. Like I'm excited for you. And you know, here's what's going to happen. Here's how this is going to go. I've been doing this for a long time and this is my experience. I know what's going to happen. I know what you're going to do. I know how this is going to go and just let them know what's going to happen. And then be like, I just really wanted to quickly get on the phone with you and give you my time and tell you because you deserve to hear this. Like you deserve this. And it's going to be a choice that you have to make to do this and to keep going. So as soon as we get off the phone here, I want you to really like dive, dig in and like write down why this is important to you. And then I want you to, uh, I want you to, uh, I'm going to send you the link to this training thing. I want you to click it like right away. And I want you to dive into this or something, just figure out something to build them up and connect with them and to set that precedent to let them know, like, this is what's going to happen. And it's, you know, here's how it's going to go. And then I want you to really, it's going to be so important to get into this video because then they're going to hear it again. They're going to keep hearing it over and over again. And they're going to be like, I'm going to do this, you know, but we've got to get them there. Obviously, like if you're not, you know, if you don't use my training, then it's going to be a little different for you. But like, um, you know, the, whatever, you know, your process looks like get together. If you're, if you don't do that process, like get together with people who do do that process and you know, figure out something that you guys can do. So three things, three, three things I want you guys to post in the chat. Like I would love to see this from all of you guys on a piece of paper. Okay. Or like a whatever. Um, what are you going to change and do differently now that you've read this book? Like, what did you do before and what are you going to do now? Okay. The next thing is, um, what, what are like the three key factors? Not just like, I'm going to change their way that they think about problems. What are three key things, like seriously specific things that you are going to do to build leaders on your team? And what, were, what will your potential leader task be that you give them? I would come up with like three tasks. Your very first one could be like, watch the video and send me your takeaways, you know, that you in the, from the new presenter get started message. That could be your first task. Your next task could be like, okay, you know, get on the phone with me. Your next task could be like, okay, once you get on the phone with me, um, you know, freaking order this book or something or watch this video or whatever, like a series, like four or five tasks or something like a series of tasks. And once, once they get to like the last task, which is like what read a book or something like you, you have that, you know, whatever, whatever it is, I want you guys to come up with that, you know, because you guys are capable of that. So those are the three things I would love to, you know, see what you guys come up with in the chat. Sarah, do you need me to repeat them? Because I know you were, okay. So the first thing is what did you used to do and what are you going to do now and change and do differently now that you've read this book? Okay. The next thing is, um, what are you going to do specifically, like three key things that you are going to do specifically to build leaders on your team? Like people that come in, what are you going to do to build them, to build them up as leaders? Um, and then, and like be specific, not like, you know, whatever I just said, like, you know, I'm going to freaking teach them how to think differently and be positive or whatever, you know? Um, how are you, you know, what are you, what are you specifically going to do? Um, and then what will your potential leadership tasks be? It's probably like a series of like five 
you know, because you can't just be like, my first task is going to be like, read this book because there's going to be a lot of things that lead up to knowing that they really are a potential leader because a lot of people will go buy a book and read it. You know what I mean? But like, there's, there's gotta be like a series of things that leads up to that. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna leave you guys with. We can talk more about where we're going to go with this in the chat. Um, I'm excited to keep going. I'm really grateful that you guys came and, um, I can't wait to keep watching you guys grow as leaders and to watch all your videos tomorrow. So let's share them in the chat. Like when you guys go live and we can like, you know, we can, we can, I mean, obviously like some of us won't have time to like, you know, watch them all, but like we can hop on and watch some. So let's do that. And hashtag, hashtag, um, hashtag, uh, let's see. Um, hashtags were bad for Facebook. Gosh, they are, but it's okay. They, just okay. like one, you know what I mean? Like just one to connect us all is fine. Um, yeah, let's do, um, growing leaders, hashtag growing leaders or something. Hashtag Ferrari story. Hashtag. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Ferrari story. How do you spell that? I don't know. Let's think of a hashtag in the chat. Let's think of a hashtag in the chat, okay? We'll get our wheels turning, okay? All right. Okay, so, guys in the chat, love you. Thank you for coming. And you guys are freaking Bye. amazing. I got some pictures too, by the way. Some of us didn't look that pretty, and I'm going to put that away. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.